Hey everyone. So in this video, what we're going to talk about is taking our clips from the media pool into our timeline in the most efficient way possible. I'm going to show you some techniques and some keyboard shortcuts and a few other things to help speed up this process. So let's get right into it. For those that aren't familiar, I'm going to go over something quickly and then we can get into those techniques. On the left hand side is our source viewer. So if I were to double click on any of the items here on the left hand side in our media pool, it will show up here. On the right hand side, this is our timeline viewer. If I come down to the timeline at the bottom and then I hit the space bar to play, we can watch our footage on the right hand side in the timeline viewer start to play. So now that we have that out of the way, let me show you a couple of these techniques. A lot of these can be done by keyboard shortcuts and that's probably the quickest way that you can do it. But I did want to show you another way that you can do the same exact thing. So if we take our footage from the left hand side in the source viewer and drag it to the timeline viewer, this menu pops out. And these are the options that we're going to discuss today. But instead of me doing this right now, I did want to show you how we can set up our clip before we end up doing this. And in our source viewer, I'm going to set in and out points. So let's say when she turns her head, I'm going to set that as in. So that's the first thing that we're going to see. We don't care necessarily about the beginning of this clip. That's why we set the end point. That's where we want our clip to start. Then maybe when she turns her head back, we can set an out point. Now we're only using the part of the clip that we care about and we don't have to worry about going into the timeline and having to cut anything and move things around. So the first one that we're going to look at is a pen to end. So I'll take this clip right here, drag it to our timeline viewer. Right near the bottom it says a pen to end. That one is a little bit self-explanatory. Obviously it takes whatever your timeline is. In this case it was only that one clip, but it will put it at the end of your timeline. I'm going to make this timeline a little bit larger so it's easier to see. The next thing I'm going to do is hit the up arrow on my keyboard and that will bring me to the edit point previous to the one that I was at. Even if I were to be in the middle of this clip, if I hit the up arrow, it brings me to the nearest edit point behind where I am. And then now we can talk about our next option. So let me double click on this clip here. Maybe we can set an end point right when she does that and an out point maybe right when she crosses here. So an out point there. The next option will be insert. And what this does is ripple the timeline. So this is something that you have to keep in mind. I'm going to take the clip on the left, drag it here, go to insert. And now we have our clip perfectly placed between those two clips. And this is really nice because it does the work for you. So if I was to undo that, Differently, what we could do is take the clip from the source viewer, drag it into the timeline. If we didn't use insert, we would have to come here, move this clip over, maybe take this clip and drag it over here, click in between, hit the backspace and get the same result. But as you saw, that was a lot more steps. Before we get into any more of the options that you saw in that menu, I wanted to quickly talk about three point editing. Right now we have an in and an out, and the way three point editing works is you need to have that third option. So we have an in and an out. Let's say I placed an out here on the timeline. So I'll go to this random space right here, click O. And what this is going to do is match that out point in the source viewer with the out point on the timeline. Now this may be hard to see. So what I'll do is zoom in on the screen capture. But on the bar that was created, when I set that out point, it's showing you where the end point will be. So in other words, what this does is it matches up the out points and it backfills back to the end point that you set up in the source viewer. Now this isn't set up by default, so let me show how you can make that appear. If we come up to view and come down to preview marks, it will show preview marks. And that gives you an idea where your clip will end up. So now that I've talked about it enough, let me drag it from the source viewer to the timeline viewer. We'll choose insert and it does exactly as I mentioned, but it also works the other way too. Let me show you on a different clip. If I select this, I choose this in point here where she's walking right into the subway train and we leave it there, but we set an in and an out point on our timeline. I will do it right there in that gap you'll now notice that we have that preview mark in our source viewer. Again, if I come over here, drag it to insert, it now only places that portion of the clip into our timeline within the space that we designated. The other thing that you may have noticed is that it moved 
this particular gap over. And that's what insert does. It will keep everything the way that it is and ripple everything forward. Now, if we wanted to get rid of that gap, what I can do is undo that option. We're back to where we set our in and out points. We set our in in the source viewer. And now I'm going to choose the one beneath it, which is overwrite. So if we look at the beginning of this clip, they match. So this is the beginning of this clip on the timeline. And this is the endpoint that we set here in the source viewer. So as you saw, whereas insert will place itself in the location that you designate and ripple everything down and get it out of the way, overwrite will replace anything regardless of where you put it. Let me show you an example. If we're looking at our timeline and I didn't like this particular clip here, other than deleting it and moving it out of the way, let's say that we wanted to replace it with this clip here. There is a replace option, but I'll get to exactly what that does in a little bit. What I can do besides manually setting in and out points is just select X on my keyboard and whichever clip is highlighted, it will set the in and out points for me. So now we take our source clip on the left hand side, drag it to the right, choose overwrite. And now in its place, we have this clip. I'm going to hit the up arrow on my keyboard. Brings me to the edit point. As you'll notice, it's exactly the same on the left because we set an endpoint on the source clip. So obviously it's going to be the same exact point of that clip. I know I already mentioned this, but just so you remember, if you want to place a clip into the timeline and have everything get out of the way, that's when you choose insert. If you want to replace a certain portion of the timeline, that's when you choose overwrite. All the footage that you've seen in this video today has come from our sponsor, ArcGrid. ArcGrid is my source for high quality, royalty-free stock footage. They're constantly updating the catalog, so you'll always have something new to choose from. Clips are easy to find because you can choose from different video themes, shot types, or which type of people that you want to include in your video. You can click on collections where clips are sorted into different categories, such as animation or even the color blue. Get two free months on top of a yearly subscription by using my link in the description below. The next option we have is replace. This one isn't exactly the same as the overwrite that we just mentioned, what it will do is replace the footage at exactly the point that you designate. So for example, let's say we want to replace a certain action in a clip at a certain point in time. Let me move this over where she goes right around the corner. I'll leave that right there. And then now if I take my timeline viewer and after she starts to put her phone in front of her, we want to replace those clips at those specific points. So what we can do is come over here and choose replace. And you'll notice, of course, both match up. The source viewer that we set a specific point matches the timeline exactly where we had that other clip. You'll remember that when she put her phone in front of her, that's when I stopped scrolling on the timeline. At that specific point, we're seeing exactly what we're seeing in the source viewer. This may be a little bit hard to wrap your head around, but let's pretend we have two clips. One's maybe a VFX shot and the other is the original footage. What you can do is edit your timeline using the original footage. And then once you have that VFX shot, you can line everything up. You'll bring something into the source viewer, the final VFX shot. And then once you have the two clips lined up, that's when you can choose the replace option. I know that the overwrite option seems to function as a replace option because it can replace what's in your timeline. But the other thing to keep in mind is overwrite will overwrite no matter where you are. The only reason it replaced the clip that I showed you before was because I chose the in and out point. If I chose a different in and out point, it wouldn't replace the entire clip. It would only replace the section that I chose. This option is also good for sound effects. So let me show you what I mean. If I take this clip here, and we bring it right to here. I'm going to choose an endpoint, and then I will append to end. And now what I want to do is now that I have this in the timeline at the point that I want, let me bring it back to the beginning. Obviously these two match up because we set an endpoint. So our source viewer matches our timeline viewer. I'm going to double click on this audio. And this may explain a little better what I was referring to. And what this sound is, is the subway train going by. I'm not going to necessarily worry about the first part of the clip. I'll just set the end point here. And this is when it starts to get loud. Let me head back to the timeline and choose the point when the train gets really close. So 
So we can do something like that. And then now I can take my clip here, drag it to the right, choose replace. And you can see that's exactly when it starts to get a lot louder. So now I'll try to play this through. Hopefully it will make a little more sense. Now that we have an audio clip in our timeline, I do want to make you aware of something. If I were to put the timeline indicator in between these two clips, so once again, I am going to hit the up arrow and let me drag this out a little bit so you can see what I'm referring to. If I now take the clip here and drag it over to the timeline viewer and choose insert, it does break up the audio clip at the bottom. So that's something that you have to keep in mind if you do have audio clips in your timeline. Obviously you can choose another option, but another way that you can handle this is if I were to undo this here, this auto track selector, if I uncheck that, if I unclick that, so now it's grayed out, and then I do the same thing, it won't affect our audio. So I'm going to come here, choose insert, it will insert our clip and not touch our audio. The next option that we have, I personally don't use that much, but it may come in handy depending on what your intention is. And let me show you what it does. If I were to take this clip and move it over, and what I'm going to do is get rid of this audio clip because we don't necessarily need it anymore, not for the demonstration at least. And I will choose a new clip. Let me choose this one here. Now we've seen this clip before, but I wanted to put a different one into the source viewer. What I can do now is take this, drag it over to our timeline viewer, put fit to fill, and it will take whatever we chose and put it in that section. So I have an in and an out point on this clip. Regardless of the length of the gap that we had at the bottom, it will take that entire section and stretch it out, either making it smaller or longer to fill that gap. Let me right click down here and choose change clip speed. And we can see that now it's at 40.60% at nine frames per second. Let's change that up a little bit, not here, but let me click on cancel, come up to our source viewer, and I'm going to get rid of these in and out points. And the way that I do that is Alt X. So now we have no in and out points. I have this here and I'm going to hit backspace. So we get rid of that clip that we already had there. And we're going to do the same thing and see what results we get when we don't set those in and out points. So now we have a longer clip and we're going to see how that interacts with the gap that we have at the bottom. Before we do anything, I'm going to come down here, hit the up arrow. So now we're at the portion where we want to start the clip. And I will come over here, drag to the right. I left click on the source, drag over to the right, all the way to the right, we have our menu and choose fit to fill. Now, if I come down here, right click and choose change clip speed, because our gap was smaller than the length of the clip, it had to speed it up in order to fit it. So whereas we only had nine frames per second before, now it's playing at 159% at 38 frames per second. Once again, there are certain situations where this would be useful. For me, I don't necessarily use this a lot. I could see this more valuable for maybe a time lapse, but maybe more so for a static frame or a graphic that you wanted to have fit into a certain area on your timeline. But as the name suggests, fit to fill fills the area that you designate in the timeline. And we can do the same thing for an in and out point. If we choose in and then out there, we can come here, fit to fill, and it fills that area right there. We can choose maybe this clip right here, and we're actually selecting a clip over here, fit to fill, and it just replaces that clip right there, but it's using the entire length of the clip. So once again, we have the whole clip here. That was a small section. If I were to right click, choose clip speed. Now it's the speed is 400%. As you may have noticed, the only one that really ripples the timeline up to this point is the insert edit. The other ones will replace whatever is on the timeline. The next option is really self-explanatory. So I'll choose a different clip here. And if we wanted to cut to a B-roll sequence and we didn't necessarily want to replace what was on the first track, 
we can choose place on top and that will do exactly as it sounds. So if I take the clip in the source viewer, left click, drag it to the right, place on top, it will place it on the next video layer of whichever is next on our timeline. And it will create that video layer if it needs to. So for example, if I come back here and just to show you, I'll use the same clip. I'm going to drag, place on top, and it created this third video layer. And the last thing I'm going to show you and the last option that we have on the right hand side is ripple overwrite. The way that this works is it's going to adjust the length of the clip and ripple like the insert option did to match whatever we chose in our source viewer. For example, I'm going to come down here. Let me just remove this gap. I have this clip right here. Let's say we no longer needed this particular clip. I will set an end point here. I will choose an out point right there. Let me just make this a little bit larger so that it's more obvious. Come here, left click, drag, ripple over right. And it replaced our clip with that clip and adjusted the timeline accordingly. So whereas the timeline ends here at 3419, so that's 34 seconds and 19 frames, I'm going to undo that, bring it to the end. It's 37 seconds and six frames. And I only bring that up because I don't know if it was visually obvious, but the clip in our source viewer was smaller than the one that we replaced. So obviously the timeline is going to shrink. The other thing that you may have noticed is that I didn't set an in and an out point on the timeline. I did set an in and an out point in the source viewer because that's the only portion of the clip that I wanted to use. But if I hover right in the middle here, if I want to get rid of this entire clip here, I don't need to select it by hitting X or set an in and out point. All I have to do, as you already saw, is left click, drag, ripple over right, and it will replace that entire clip. So I hope that makes sense. This way you'll be able to be a little more thoughtful about how you assemble everything in your timeline. If you have any questions or anything wasn't clear, ask me in the comment section below. All the links to my gear are in the description below also. Follow me on Twitter, I'm pretty active over there. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.